Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Catholic bishops in Austria have slammed a parliamentary vote to legalise euthanasia. The vote to pass the Austrian Assisted Suicide Act comes after the Constitutional Court ruled that outlawing assisted suicide would be a violation of human rights. Once it comes into force, the new law will permit terminally ill patients above the age of 18 to request assisted dying, with each case to be assessed by two doctors. The new law has the support of the ruling Austrian People's Party. Bishops have said that the new law is unacceptable and represents a cultural breach. Earlier this year, Spain granted permission for assisted suicide, evoking a strong response from Catholic bishops. In the United Kingdom, Scotland too is considering an assisted suicide bill, which is being fiercely opposed by pro-life groups and the Episcopate. A Catholic bishop in Nigeria has said that the crisis in the country is a war against Christians. In a statement issued by Bishop Wilfred Chikpa Anagbe of Makurdi, the destruction of churches and church-run institutions and the killing of believers demonstrate that the attacks are specifically targeting Christians. He said that although the government believes the violence has nothing to do with religion, the ground reality is that there is a jihad against Christians. The bishop said that the perpetrators of violence are mostly Muslims from the north of the country. He added that their destructive pattern reflects other Islamic terror outfits elsewhere. Some of the insurgent groups in Nigeria profess allegiance to major Islamist outfits such as ISIS or Islamic State's West African province. The United States Senate has voted to confirm Rashad Hussein as the next ambassador at large for international religious freedom. Hussein, who is of Indian origin, is the first American Muslim to hold the highest ranking position in the State Department for advancing international religious freedom in the nation's foreign policy. President Joe Biden nominated Hussein for the position in July, and the Senate voted 85 to 5 in favour of his appointment. Hussein formerly worked as a White House lawyer, a special envoy to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and a US special envoy for the Center for Strategic Counterterrorism Communications under the Barack Obama administration. The US international religious ambassador's responsibilities include promoting the right to religious freedom abroad, denouncing violations of that right, and recommending appropriate responses by the government when that right is violated. He is also responsible for integrating US international religious freedom policies and strategies into foreign policy efforts. Last week, suspected ISIS-linked militants beheaded a pastor in Mozambique's northern province of Cabo Delgado and forced his wife to take his severed head to authorities. According to International Christian Concern, the pastor's identity has not yet been revealed, although he lived in the Nova Zambezia neighbourhood. The Zimbabwe Daily says that the pastor's wife claimed that suspected Islamic State-linked terrorists intercepted her husband in a field, decapitated him and then handed over his head and asked her to inform the authorities. Islamic State-linked terrorist group Al-Shabaab is reportedly behind the gruesome act. Since 2017, attacks by ISIS-linked terrorists have killed at least 3,340 people and displaced more than 800,000 people in Cabo Delgado province in the former Portuguese colony. Recently, President Felipe Inusi has said that the frequency of jihadist assaults had fallen this year as a result of the intervention of Rwanda and other neighbouring nations to combat Islamic insurgency. More than 10,000 pro-life supporters are expected to gather in Chicago for the annual March for Life next month. The theme of the January the 8th March is Saving Midwestern Lives, and the rally will begin at the Federal Plaza. Pro-lifers will demand the protection of unborn children and their mothers during the event, in which the focus will be on Illinois' pro-choice policies. They claim that these regulations attract women and girls seeking abortion from across Illinois and from neighbouring states. According to the State Health Department, in 2019 there were 46,517 abortions. Among those addressing the rally will be Cardinal Blaise Supich of the Chicago Archdiocese, Illinois State Representative Avery Bourne and Senior Pastor of the Chicago Embassy Church Chris Butler. The Holy Father Pope Francis is likely to visit India early in 2023. This was revealed by Cardinal Oswald Gracias of Mumbai in a recent interview with America magazine. The Cardinal, who is the head of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, was in the Vatican for a three-day meeting of the Advisory Council constituted by the Holy Father soon after his election. The prelate said the Holy Father is keen to visit India, adding that he has mentioned as much many times. Cardinal Gracias said that preparations are yet to be made 
paid for the papal visit. The Cardinal expects the Pope to visit four or five different places, including the memorial of the Father of the Nation Mahatma Gandhi in the capital New Delhi and the grave of Saint Mother Teresa in the metropolis of Calcutta. He also said that His Holiness might visit the Syro Malabar, Syro Malankara, and Latin churches in the country. The last pontiff to visit India was Pope St. John Paul II in 1999. In what is seen as a setback to pro-lifers in the United States, the New Jersey Board of Medical Examiners has given the green light to the practice of non-physician medical professionals performing abortions. From now on, advanced practice nurses, physicians' assistants, certified nurse midwives and certified midwives can perform first trimester aspiration abortions in the state. Non-physician medical practitioners will also be allowed to do them in an office setting after 14 weeks of pregnancy as part of the policy change. Last October, the New Jersey State Board of Medical Examiners unanimously approved the amendment of the quote, medically unnecessary abortion laws that came into effect on December the 6th. Governor Phil Murphy said that New Jersey is prioritizing the expansion of these services. The governor identifies himself as a lifetime Catholic. Archbishop Anthony Fisher of Sydney has said that the legalization of euthanasia and assisted suicide will be a radical departure from one of the foundational principles of society. In a statement published in a Catholic Weekly, the prelate opposed the euthanasia bill that is before an Australian parliamentary committee. He also said that those debating the bill should take the concerns of believers seriously. The prelate said that the law seeking the legalization of euthanasia divides people into two categories. The first category, he said, comprises those whose lives are sacred and those whose deaths are prevented with heavy investment. The Archbishop said the second category constitutes people who are considered dispensable. He said as time goes on and assisted suicide is normalised and the second category of people will be expanded. He cited the example of Canada where euthanasia was legalised in 2016. Within five years the category of those eligible for assisted suicide expanded from the terminally ill to include the chronically sick and the disabled. In the US state of Illinois, the governor has signed a repeal of the Parental Notice of Abortion Act, which mandates that minors have to notify an adult before undergoing an abortion. The church and pro-lifers have criticized Governor J.B. Pritzker for signing the repeal. The state legislature had passed the repeal in October, and now with the governor signing it, repeal will come into effect on June the 1st of next year. Bishop Thomas Paproki of Springfield in Illinois said the signing of the bill is a dark and disgraceful moment in the history of the state. He said this legislation provides cover, secrecy and darkness to evil deeds. The bishop also said the bill violates the most fundamental rights and duties entrusted by God to patents to ensure the health and safety of their children. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.